Hey, Econ students, we got a video here on the circular flow model. Should be a fairly quick one. Uh, really two big concepts here with this. So factors of production, uh, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. We're going to go through that when we look at the diagram itself. And then the circular flow model itself is really just showing the connection between individuals and businesses through the various markets. So let's uh, dive into this. Uh, you can get this, uh, the, the notes that we usually are looking at with these videos that are on Canvas. There is a section of the notes that's on the circular flow model. I'm just choosing to use the slideshow with this one instead, uh, just so it's a little bit more interactive as we go through. You'll see, you'll see why as we go. Um, all right, so let's dive into this. Like I said, the, the circular flow model is all about connecting individuals and businesses together um, and how do they interact with one another. And what we see is that there are two different marketplaces where individuals and businesses can connect. Okay, the first one we're going to look at is the resource market. So the resource market, and you can see the product market is at the top. The resource market down at the bottom is, is where individuals are going to provide what we call the factors of production to businesses. All right, so this is how businesses get started. Now, ultimately, they're all lumped together here as four uh, factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. But ultimately, entrepreneurship is the most important because without having that individual that starts a business, a business is never going to get created. So a business can't create itself. So having that individual that takes the risk and um, puts, you know, puts the, the money forward or, or raises the money or has the idea, that person is most important because they are the one that are going to combine the other factors of production to actually make a business happen and create a product. All right. So um, now let's look at the other ones here really quick. Land and capital are pretty basic. I mean, your land is where you are going to make your business function, whether that be factory space or even if it's just an office or where you're storing your equipment, you know, it, it will depend business to business on what that what that means. Capital is any type of, this is anything, remember capital good, this is anything that is used to produce another good. So this would include any machinery, tools, computers, anything else that would be needed to create the product that is being created by this particular business. The labor is probably the easiest to understand because most of you can connect with this individually. We all provide our labor at some point or another uh, to somebody in exchange for money. All right. So that's that's what really what we're looking at here. So the factors of production are provided from individuals to businesses with the idea that we are going to earn a profit for it. So you can see the arrows go from individual through the resource market to businesses. And then it comes right back to us in the form of cash. All right. So if you decide that you are going to go, you know, apply for a job at Martin's and you're going to push carts, uh, what you're doing here is you are you're going to the resource market to provide Martin's with your labor. And, and try to make a deal with them that you will provide your labor, your time, your energy to them in exchange for money. All right. So that's where that's happening in the resource market. So now uh, catching us up here, individuals now have money. Uh, we have goods and services that we would like to purchase and businesses now have a product because the fa factors of production have been combined together. And now businesses are sitting there with products ready to sell because that is the purpose. They're trying to make a profit. So this brings us to the product market where businesses now are providing their goods and services to individuals. Okay, so the goods and services flow through the product market, which would be anywhere that you can actually purchase a good or a service. I'll give you an example here at the end. Um, but obviously these businesses are not providing their goods and services just out of the kindness of their heart. Uh, they are profit seeking. So in order for an individual to receive a good or a service that's being provided by a particular business, they will also need to be compensated for that. So the money flows through. All right, so let me give you an example here quick. If you are in the product market, let's say the business that we're referring to is Apple. All right, so they're selling computers, smartphones, all that stuff. You can buy Apple products from other places than just Apple itself. Like, yes, you can go on, the, on their website and order products from them, but you can buy Apple products from many different retailers, um, especially if you include your, you know, the phone market with all the different places that you can buy that. So any place where you can buy an Apple phone or a computer or whatever, that is part of the product market. So anywhere where we can go, any location or an online place where we can go to exchange goods and services for our money. And then it just flows through. So you see that the money lines just continue to flow through back through the product market uh, to businesses, to resources and back to the individual. All right. And it just keeps flowing through and we keep providing our factory production. Businesses keep getting created and uh, and it, it just keeps going. So it's kind of a never ending cycle in that sense. Now, one note on this before we wrap this video up, the um, 
a lot of times you might see these uh, these this model in in a slightly different format. So you might have the product market or the resource market uh, flipped. On the other side, individuals and businesses might be flipped to opposite directions. So even even those ones that don't look exactly the same, I try to be pretty consistent and use this model right here. So you're always seeing the same thing. But if you do come across one that's a little bit different, do recognize that it is still the same. You're still going to have the arrows going the correct direction. You're always going to have the money flowing from businesses to individuals in the product market. I'm sorry, the resource market and the money flowing from individuals to businesses in the product market. It's always going to go that way. Goods and services go from businesses to individuals in the product market. Okay. It's always going to be exactly the same with that. All right. So that's going to wrap us up for the circular flow model. I'll see you next time.